Morning guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. The paint shop rung me on Friday and said that their little Ford Focus was done, which is brilliant because it was only up there literally a couple of days. We're gonna head up there now, pick that up, bring it back to the yard and do all the little jobs that need doing on it today, have it tracked up, have it washed. We're gonna talk through some vehicle categories. Quite a lot of you keep reaching out to me. Um, applying for a logbook. We're gonna cover all of that in this video and try and get that little focus wrapped up. I am waiting for a logbook for it, but it'd be really nice to get all the jobs done so that as soon as the V5 comes, I can get that car sold. Let's get up there and pick it up. So I've just got back to the yard. I'm well happy with the car, 150 pound. I asked him about the front bumper. I asked him to do it and he said to me, Rob, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. You're wasting your money. I'll charge you for painting the front bumper and it ain't gonna look no better than it looks at the moment. And he started showing me around three or four different cars there with plastic bumpers that all slightly look off like that. So we're not gonna be doing that front bumper. Quite a lot of you reached out to me about the dents that was running through these two doors here. I have had those done. I said to him, can you do them while you're there? And he said, yeah, absolutely. So both of them little dents in them doors have been done. And then of course, we've had that back wheel arch repaired and painted. So overall for 150 pound, I really can't grizzle. Quite a lot of you said to me, get this dent done in the door. It is a tiny little mark. We're gonna be polishing this door up. Guys, it was not worth doing that dent in the door. So I have left it as it is. But let's stop waffling on, get it unloaded and start doing all the little jobs that need doing on this car. Wheel arch liner and the sponge that goes in the back of the wing the ecu box is still not arrived but i will be doing that at some point i'll do a little sneak peek on instagram of me fitting that but i do want to try and get the car buttoned up for you today and for me not you know for me to do that i would have to hold this video off for another couple of days also quite a lot of you will notice that door handle i forgot to get him to do it so i'm going to pop that back up there but again that can all be done whilst I'm uh, waiting for the V5. A couple of you mentioned, it was only a couple of people. Rob, what do you do with all the scrap? We do save it up and once a, once a month, once a quarter, depends how many, you know, how much we get. We do load it all onto the back of Chris's truck, everything that we get, and we do take it and scrap it as and when the, light, the scrap box is full up. So, if that would make an interesting video, we're gonna do that tomorrow. Let us know and we'll do a bit of a thing on that. We're gonna be taking the metal to one scrapyard. We've rung around, got the best price. And then we'll be taking the batteries and um, the, the wire and bits and pieces to another scrapyard. So yeah, let us know what you think about doing a video on that. But I've just got these out. I've got to take the bolts out to bolt that front bumper back on. We've got a bolt down here for the wheel arch liner. So you never, ever, ever throw parts away until you are completely finished with the car. I won't be unbolting that because it just fell off. How lovely was that? So yeah, never ever throw parts away. So I'm gonna get all those bolts out, use those on repairing the car. And then we'll be putting all the rest of this in the truck, ready for the scrap tomorrow. That's enough talking, let's get on with the job. I'm into the, uh, into the workshop, get some tools. And as usual, Chris is busy. We didn't put this in the video, but he's, uh, you notice that his drop links were a little bit rough down the bottom here and normally that could possibly could be the forklift or they've just worn out but he got himself a couple of new ones on ebay that was cheap wasn't they tenner tenner for two so he's going to replace those before it uh, goes on the road just thought i'd add that in there guys so i've got the microphone plugged in all the way over here hopefully it's uh you're not going to get much wind noise I'm gonna try not to do too much time lapse today. I know everybody likes to see as much as they can, so we're gonna go back a little bit old school like we used to, where I'd cut in and out and tell you what I was doing and how we was getting on with it. The competition that we run for the Ferrari badge and the T-shirt, there were some great ideas and I have read through each and every one of them. I can't actually go back in, uh, I can't respond to everybody. There were so many comments, but we took the comment with a bit of humour. We do plan on doing most of the things you said 
doing a camper conversion. It may be in a year's time, but we will do it. Various other jobs, upgrading a car, you know, buying a car that's smashed up, repairing it and putting it back through the auction. We'll be doing all of that. But the comment that made me laugh the most, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic, and I am gonna to have to go back through and find the comment because you are the winner. And that was the chap that said, fire up the barbecue, Rob, and have a day off. And that really did tickle us, and we plan on doing exactly that. So that's brilliant, and you have won them items, and I will be in touch regarding that. The other thing I just wanted to quickly put in, quite a lot of you reach out to me, and I don't genuinely get the chance to do it, and that's shout-outs. A lot of you do ask, and every time I do get five minutes like now, I will try a couple of you, but I can't promise you that I'm going to do it, and it is, you know... There's too many to, to shout out, but a couple of people that have repeatedly said, Rob, give us a shout out, which was Cy Bob Bill, and he also said he's going to visit the merch store. Um, Zoe Kemp and family, and, and that was from your husband. Ross McLaren from Brisbane. Thank you very much, Ross, for watching all the way out there. Thomas Beasley and Andy and Joan Richardson. Thank you all very much, and uh, I hope this, this is what you wanted. Let's stop waffling on and get on with a job in hand. Apps in today's video, you, you should all uh, be quite happy about that. I've got the wheel arch liner in there. I nipped up the uh, steering drumstick or steering arm, whatever you'd like to call it. Put all the bolts back in the wheel arch liner. Put the bolts back in the wing, so that it, uh, the bumper, so that it met the wing. And uh, yeah, just cracked on, stuck that little black trim back on there. So we're now going to take it down for a valet. And then we're going to take it over to the tire bay and have the full alignment done and wheel balancing and get that front passenger side uh, driver's side tire so so even though we did that tracking uh, well we literally didn't do anything we just put the steering arm on it actually drives really really nice this car the steering wheel's dead straight and you can let it go and it goes in a dead straight line so I'm not sure how far that out it's going to be. It's definitely got to be out, but it's certainly drivable. We're going to head there first and get the tracking done and actually have the wash done after. I don't want to make all the tyres all greasy and, and um, with tyre shine on them because the chap's going to be doing the tracking. He's going to get it all over his hands. So let's go and get the tracking done first and then we'll go and have it all valeted after. So I was just going to spin the camera around and talk categories and once again we catch the Kingsbury Bridge heading over to have the, um, the wheels uh, balanced and tracked. So I'll spin this round and we go through that while we're sitting here because it probably will take quite a while. The boat's a long way away. So guys, quite a lot of you do reach out to me in various videos asking about the V5 logbooks for the cars. How do I go around, how do I get around it? How do I go about it? There's no getting around not having a V5. It's nigh on impossible to sell a car without a V5 unless you know the person you're selling it to and there's no keeper on file. We'll get into that in a moment. But applying for a V5, a lot of people reach out to me and say, do you put your own name on them? Do you put, what do you put on the V5? Do you pay for it, etc., etc." Now, unless your vehicle is a category S, you do have to pay. So let's talk about the Focus in particular. I've rung DVLA. I'll put their number in the description. You can ring them about any car. And they won't answer who owns the car or anything like that, but they will answer, has the car got a keeper on file? And they'll say to you, no, that car is in the trade or no, it has a keeper. So this Focus has a keeper. So I filled out a V62 application. Very, very simple. Name, address, make, model, chassis number, registration, um, the reason you haven't got a logbook, cat C, cat D, etc. 
So I'll fill it out and always put my trade name on the V62 because that is what I'm selling the car under. And most car traders will put their trade name on the trade slip and have the V5, that's how it works. A lot of people say you can go and tax the, you, you can only tax the car at the time of applying for the logbook V6, via V62 if there is no keeper on file. And even if there isn't a keeper on file and your car's a category S, when you tax it at the post office, you do have to pay the £25 fee for a V5. You will get that refunded eventually from DVLA, but you do have to pay the fee. So that's pretty much the situation with a logbook. I have tried sending them before, recorded delivery. It takes even longer because they sign for it. It sits there for over a week before they hit round to opening it. So I'll just send it first class all the time and write the address on the envelope. Um, DVLA Swansea, SA991 DD. I've done it hundreds of times, so do remember it. And on the back of the envelope, I actually write on the back, V62 application. So that when it arrives their end, they see that and know pretty much what what department to send it to. And I feel that speeds up the process. It may not, it, you know, it's just a myth and I've always done it. And right at the bottom of the form, when you tick, the, it's a cat S. I always put on there, Copart and the lot number, insurance loss. Again, you don't have to put that. I'm not sure if it makes any difference. I always have and I suppose I always will. So that is pretty much it with the V5s. They do take up to six weeks. And when they got a keeper on file, the process is they will now open my application and they will write to the previous owner and say, do you still own this vehicle or has it been, you know, have you got rid of it basically, regardless of whether it was insurance, sold it or whatever. And they have to allow that original owner 14 days to respond that might be wrong it might have changed to seven but i'm sure someone will correct me if i'm wrong but that is basically the process and if they don't hear from them then they'll issue you a v5 if they do hear from them they're going to issue it to you even quicker so i'm not going to waffle on too much more about that that's the basics the bridge is down now um it has been about 10 minutes sitting here so we'll leave it there, we'll go and get the tracking done and we'll do the categories right at the end of the video. So this is that front tyre I was mentioning earlier in the video. It's got no tread on the inside or the outside of it and it's split and you can see the wire through it. That's on the ramp guys, all the alignment gear is on there now. They're just setting it all up. Unfortunately I'm not insured so I can't actually go in the garage. But um, yeah, it's on there and I always bring it to the same place. They use the best technology, that hunt or wheel alignment. It's fantastic. I used it on the Ferrari. I use it on all the cars. And a couple of people did say, will I be having this done? I do have this done on every car. I think it's a big must for the money it costs. It really does make all the difference in the way the car drives. It's been beautiful all day, but the wind has just picked up a little bit. So hopefully we don't get much wind noise. But I've just um, just been and had it washed. It does need a full valet in an ideal world. It, they did say it's quite mucky inside and there was a lot of dog hair in the boot. So in the next video on the car, it will be the last one. The next one will be replacing that mirror. I have got it and that cap's going to go on it. We'll be doing the ECU box, having a full valet done on it. And then we'll be crunching the numbers and we'll probably give it a bit of a polish in the next video and go around and do all the little touch-ups on it but yeah let me know what you think we're going to go inside in a minute and finish the video but yeah this door is the new door this door is the original door and that front wing is the new wing so that wing matches that door perfect so, and it matches the quarter so not really sure what's going on there but what I'll do is give that a good polish. Hopefully it does make a bit of a difference. If it doesn't, it's no hardship. I've run the guy that I've got the back door off and the wing, and he has got that door. So we may have to swap that out. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I will just quickly show you inside how it's come up. Obviously we do need to get these seats properly washed because 
they are quite stained up, but they've given it a clean out and said it does need a full valet. If you look up the back there on the um, headlining, it's quite mucky and up there as well. And like the sun visors really bugs me how grubby they get. So we will have all that done. And I'll just show you in the boot. They've probably hoovered up, I would say, 80% of it and it's still covered in dog hair so we've got to get this out and get it all shampooed because it's quite smelly as well like the, the smell of dog so let's go inside right guys so we are still trying to work out the medium with the videos the length i know when i first started out we was doing videos around 10 minutes and everyone said oh we really want longer videos and then I went for a stage of where I was putting out really long videos and it was taking me over an hour to upload them, like well over 20 minutes. And a lot of people wasn't sticking around to watch those videos. They said that they was far too long. So we're trying to find a medium. In this video today, the main things I wanted to do was get that car done. I really wanted to try and get it all wrapped up, but there's gonna be obviously one more video on it. Um, I wanted to do the shout outs, I wanted to do the categories, and I wanted to do the V5. Unfortunately, the video has got quite long already. It's quite late in the day, and I'd really like to get this out there for you this evening. So what we're gonna do, I do hope that you don't mind, I know I said we was gonna do it at the beginning of the video, is we're gonna hold the categories off and do that in the next video. Just, it breaks it down a little bit, and it's, otherwise it's too much information in one video anyway. So, I think we covered the V62 form for the logbook today, and everything else that we needed to do. Sorry, I'm sitting here rubbing my hands together, it's very cold. Let us know what you think on the length of the video. Um, what else have I got to say? Check out the merch store, the link is in the description. I always forget to say, guys, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Like, subscribe and share. I want to thank each and every one of you very much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow in the next one. Let us know if you want to see that scrap video in the comment section and we'll film that as well.